Welcome everyone, Karen Eiten here. Uh, today we're going to be sewing a pair of jean hems. So I had a request to show you how to I sew a pair of jean hems, and that's what we're going to do. So um, I can have my machine on. I have a pair of Levi's here, and this is a pair that is my husband's, and I actually tapered the legs, so it's gonna look a little bit different than a regular off the factory, off the edge off the rack um, so we're just gonna go ahead and sew. what I do is I have a one inch hem marked out so I go on the inside leg which is goes all the way up to the crotch the inside leg is where I want to start to make my um, stitching where I stop and I start so I fold it one half of an inch and then another half of an inch and I'm going to be starting right on that seam so I take and I take a pair of scissors and I kind of tenderize it a little bit. I pound that down Then I'm going to run my machine over. And so I start right on top of there. So I put the needle down and then I get ready to fold the rest, a half of an inch and a half of an inch. And so I come across like that. Then I lift it, lift up the foot. I scoop my material back about three stitches back put the needle back down on the stitch line that I've already sewed. That way it locks it in place because this machine, the Singer 281-1, does not have a back stitch. Like you can't push a button and go backwards, okay? So that locks the stitches in. Now I'm gonna be coming across here um, this other uh, seam, side seam. So I'm turning a half of an inch and a half of an inch and then just sewing. like that. And so you can see I've taken, I've tapered the legs on these pants. My husband has really nice legs and they are um, thin. He's on his feet a lot at his work and his legs are very nice. And he wears some of these really wide leg pants. And I'm gonna tell you a secret. They look ridiculous on him. <laughs> he looks much better in a short, um, you know in a tapered leg pant so he had three or four of these jeans in my shop and I thought today I would show you this and go ahead and do a little bit of work for him so um, I'm a little bit caught up in my shop uh, until Thursday so and then I'm going to go I went across that flat felt seam again and then I'm gonna back my machine up like two or three stitches and then go across again. So you have a really nice locked in um, stitching for your hem, right? So then we have our, see? And then we have a sh very narrower, you know, much narrower um, hem line, or, or width to the pant leg. And that will look so much better. And I, what I did is I tapered from the bottom all the way up to the hip, to underneath the pocket. So the leg, will be much narrower and it'll look so much better for him so I pound this down a little bit go across it lift your foot up pull it pull the material forward about three or four stitches whatever two or three whatever you want and then fold a half of an inch and a half of an inch and then go right on top of that stitch line. Go right on top of it. And then the same thing on this seam. Pull a half of an inch and a half of an inch. And you can measure this all out too. I've been doing it for such a long time that I don't have to really measure it out so much anymore. And then when you get, you want to cut off your thread so when you go across it again, it doesn't get all that junked up inside your stitching line and you have a nice, neat stitching line. Okay. And then you're gonna lift your foot to get your, lift your, you know, the foot pedal up so it's on top, starting to go on top of the seam because it'll get stuck if you don't lift up your foot. You kind of have to walk it just a little bit, not too bad. And then lift it up again and then go backwards there 
and then it's locked in, right? So that's how I do my uh, jean hems or any kind of, a, you know, if it were a different type of pant, then you might, you know, need to cut it a different way. But I cut it one inch, and then I fold a half of an inch and a half of an inch. That's how I get a pretty nice hem. And then I'll press it all out, and it'll look a lot better. Okay, so that's how I do it. And it works for me. It's been working for me for 25 years. I've been doing it that way. And um, so you just have to kind of, um, you know, know the tricks and know what works and what doesn't. Like, you know, pounding the, the hard seams down and um, walking it over the seam a little bit and just things like that. So you once you know that and you have the feel for your machine, it'll be you know it'll come so much easier to you right so i hope you like this video give me the thumbs up today yay give me the thumbs up today if you like this video there'll be more and more different types of videos coming that have to do with tailoring and sewing and and knowledge that you can learn and uh, put a p in the comments below if you're interested in my tailoring program where i help you and and guide you through a process of learning um, to be an apprentice of uh, tailoring. So it's a great way to work from home and to make a living from home. And if you're interested in that, I'd love to talk to you about it. And um, you do need a little bit of sewing skills already to be able to master uh, the art of tailoring. We will be going kind of off of uh, my own experience and the book that I wrote. So um, the art of tailoring, step-by-step -step skills that can lead to a career. It's on Amazon, it's all over the world, it's in Barnes and Noble. Um, so just go ahead and you can look online for it. Just type it in the, the um, title and it should come up under, you know, Karen Iten. And um, you can go ahead and do that. And that will help you with some of the steps that I will be showing in my program. But I will be teaching on Zoom, hands-on, so you will be able to, to master and practice the art of tailoring, okay? So thank you so much. Please subscribe to this channel if you're interested in the content I share here. We'll be getting into a lot of other things about tailoring that can really help you uh, to make more money at your business, right? You want to be able to be good at what you do. And whatever goes out your door, you want to make sure that it, you know that it looks nice, it has your name on it. Um, and things like that because even though you don't sign each garment that goes out the door your signature from working on it goes out the door right and what we're helping people with is to build confidence to build confidence in themselves to have garments that they're wearing that they feel comfortable with this boosts their confidence if we can boost everyone's confidence in what they're wearing by the good job that we do um, hey, that's great for society, right? And that's what we want to do as tailors is to be able to uh, boost other people's confidence in their garments and in their clothing, in their wardrobe, right? So, you know, you want to think about that. It's not only, you know, the job that we do. There's more psychology that goes along with it when people wear different garments that we tailor to fit them, right? So we want to think about other people as we work on things, right? And when you're working on things, you want to make sure that you really, you know, take it apart if you have to and restitch it, you know. Just make sure that the job that you do looks great. You don't do a fast job just to make that one payday, right? You want to do a great job to make that dollar on what the order is, but also for those people to go out the door and to tell five or ten more people like, hey, go back there. Go back there and get your alterations done. To feel good about the job that we do for them. And that they'll bring more people in the door for us. And they'll come back again and again, right? So I have a lot of long-time customers that um, were always coming to me. Constantly coming to me. And, you know, that's just all by word of mouth, right? And that's about the job that you do that goes out the door. You wanna really make sure that the first thing about tailoring is to do a good job. If it doesn't sew up the first time correctly, rip it out, start over. Um, I had a very big challenge this week. I worked on two mother of the bride dresses. One, I cut off the sleeves. It had this big, long sleeve that came down to here. It was all lace and it was really stiff lace it was scratchy and the, the customer didn't like it. So I had to cut it off and made a rolled hem on it. 
and got rid of some of the bulk. It looks so much nicer. I did that for her. And then another dress I had, um, it was a, it was in the bodice. I had to take up the shoulders. Excuse me one minute. Sorry about that. But I had to take up the shoulders, and it was quite a bit. It was more than an inch. And usually I don't take it up that much, but I did this time. And But in, in doing so, I had to, <coughs> excuse me, I had to reshape the neckline. I had to reshape the sleeve. <coughs> excuse me. And I had to reshape the circle. So there was this. It was navy blue, and it was kind of like a round neckline, and it come down to a V, and it had a kind of like a little medallion type, I don't know, a little thing on the front of it. And the shoulders, it was polyester, and the polyester um, outer layer, and then the polyester inner layer. So the inner layer was lined with this polyester, the same stuff, right? And then that overlay was... Um, into the neckline it was sewed into the neckline so when i took up the shoulders one inch on the double on each side um, i had to take in that sheer overlay also so when i took it in not only did it cause a problem of the neckline not being rounded anymore right it also made the sleeve underneath not rounded anymore and then it also made the circle, which was a circle, it made it into a V when I took it in over an inch. So I had to recut. And it's like, um, it was part of the job that I didn't know that I was going to have to recut that whole circle. I thought maybe I could take it from the neck and then kind of angle it out to the circle. But that didn't work. Um, and it didn't lay nice on the shoulder. So I had to take it straight across, finish the edge of the overlay. And then I had to take the stitching out of the, what was the circle here to show her skin. I had to take all the stitching off of the top portion of that. I had to press it out, recut that so it was a circle again and not just a V. And then I had to restitch it, right? And then I also had to... Um, you know, take in all three of those layers at the top. So I had to take in the sheer, I had to take in the front bodice, I had to take in the underneath bodice part, which was also polyester, and not just the lining. And so uh, all three of those layers. And then I had to reshape the neckline. I had to press it out, take the stitching out from like here to way back there, press out that the hem that was in there, and then reshape that curve and then put it back together. And it was a little challenging for me because usually when I have a dress like that and it has the overlay, a lot of times it's like a separate piece of overlay. It's not built into the dress. Well, this was actually built into the dress. So I ended up charging her for taking in the shoulders, but I didn't recharge re her for recutting. And I did recut, I recut the lace, the um, the sheer overlay on the circle part and the neckline, and I recut the neckline and I recut the sleeve underneath the sheer, and I really should have charged her a recut fee, but I didn't, and I want to explain this why I didn't because I already gave her a price up front, and I like to stick to the prices that I give up front, right? Um, and I didn't want to cause a problem with her because I'm just starting to get my business going again after four years of taking courses and, you know, earning certificates and, you know, writing some books and different things like that. So I wanted to um, stick to the price that I said, even though it cost me probably an extra 45 minutes, I'd say. Um, and, and this is something like when you, when you start a tailor shop, this is something that you'll learn when to charge more and when not to, right? So we're always thinking about, we want to make more money for our time. Yes, of course we do. And I very easily could have, but if I was going to charge her an extra recut fee, I should have told her before I started on the dress, I should have told her at the fitting, right? 
And I didn't because I didn't, I thought I could, you know, like I said, take that sheer overlay and angle it a little bit and it would be okay, but it wasn't going to happen with that dress. And um, I didn't realize that I would have to reshape that much, right? And so, and I'm just getting my business up and going again. So there's a time to charge more and there's a time not to charge more, right? So, and this was a time not to charge more and disrupt anything. And especially because this lady was a particular lady. And so you'll just have to learn um, when you can charge more for that recut fee, when you can't, right? And, but it was very challenging. And I say, you know, I got one side going done and then she was kind of like, you know, are you going to get it done today? And then it kind of like made me nervous. Like, am I going to get it done today? Yes, I'm going to get it done today. But, you know, why are you like, you know, starting to ask me, you know? But anyway, regardless, it was, um, you know, a couple times I stitched the, the sleeve. You know, I stitched across the sleeve, measured it all out, stitched it. And then for some reason, like when you go to do the inside, right, you're really really boggled up in there right you're you're if you don't open it up wide enough it's like not enough room to get in there to really do the alteration so you have to make sure that you open up far enough to get in there to lay it flat to do a nice alteration well when i went to sew inside it ended up a little bit of a hump you know a little bit of a squiggle and so that I laid it out flat and I'm like, this doesn't look right, you know? So I had to rip that out and go back and redo it and make sure that I opened it up a little bit further so I could make sure that it was going to lay a nice flat seam. And that's things that if you're running a really fast, fast tailor shop that you may just overlook and like, oh, I'm just screw it. I'm just going to go with it, right? Um, no, you don't. You want to rip it out and go over and redo it again. And... A lot of times people don't do that. They get into this, you know, I want to make the dollar today. I want to make the dollar today and, and all of that. And they don't think about um, doing a good job first and just rip it out and just do it. When you're doing the job, you don't want to come back and open it back up again. This was a tedious job and it had to be right the first time. It, you can't like go back and try to redo it again. It, you had to make sure it was spot on, right? Um, so these are the kind of jobs that you'll get into sometimes if you decide to take dresses or whatever it is you take, you still want to do a really nice job if it's going out your door, even if it's not. But even when I sew for my kids or my husband, I try to do a really nice job no matter what. Um, but you'll just have to take your time with that. And I just wanted to, um, you know, make sure that you realize that Sometimes there's a time when you can charge more. Like maybe I could have charged more and called her up. Like if I had 15 dresses in here at prom time and said, I come up to this dress and it's like, and I know I have all, a lot of other prom dress waiting. And I would have came to this dress and said, you know, when I fit you, I didn't realize it was an inch and a quarter that had to be taken up in your your um, shoulders. That's okay. I'll go ahead and do it. But I just want to let you know, I'm going to be charging you a recut fee, Right. So that's where you can get into trouble. And that's where I lost 45 minutes that I should have charged for that I didn't. But it wasn't the right time to charge, right? When I'm just getting my business up and going. So there's a right time and there's a wrong time. So if your, your sewing shop is filled and you, you have plenty of work to do, and it's okay for you to say um, and call her up before you ever start working on it or whatever, or when she's in here, that I'm going to have to charge you a recut fee because to take in this much, and I should have known better and I should have done it. Um, but I didn't want to lose out on this sale completely either because she would have probably said, well, I had this dress for a while and so I just won't bring it to you. I just won't have it done. I'll find another dress, you know? So um, I didn't want that to happen either. So you just have to know when is a good time and when is a bad time to, you know, charge your, you know, recut fee. It's okay to charge for your recut fee as long as you state it up front. But see, I didn't state that up front. And I didn't want to charge her more than I already sent her out the door with a ticket that said how much she was going to be paying, right? 
So some of these jobs that you get into, you spend a little bit more time on if you don't know this stuff ahead of time. And I'm just getting back into it and it was kind of thrown at me. And, you know, but I should have charged her a recut fee and I didn't. So I don't want you to like not charge a recut fee. But then again, if you're just starting out and you forgot to mention it to her that there's going to be a recut fee, I wouldn't like tell her when she comes back that I had to recut this and I had to recut that and there's a recut fee that will tick her off she'll tell everybody 10 times about it you know or a or hundred people that you know you charged her after you she came back another fee and when you're just starting your business you don't want that to happen you don't want any any bad rapport going against you, right? So I'm just saying be careful when you do do that, right? You want to give a price up front and then for them after the fitting and for them to go out the door with a price. And if you don't state it right at that initial time, I wouldn't restate that later unless you have a ton of work going on and you really don't need that order for that dress and you really don't care if she brings it or not right um so just think about those things that i stated um and i'm sure that that will help you too from you know that's how we all learn is from our own mistakes right so now when a dress comes in i'm always going to have that in the back of my mind like how exactly is this dress going together and if i take it in this much what recutting is going to be involved and that's one thing that i want to try to get away from this time in my business is the recutting i've done a lot of it in the years and I don't want to be recutting and remaking clothing. I've done a ton of that. And I want to do the simpler jobs. I want to do the faster money-making jobs where you're only taking it in a half of an inch, no recutting involved, right? That's the kind of work that we want to do. Um, so anyway, but, you know, I'll, I'll always remember that. And I will always... Um, now, from this day forward, always realize that how much work is really involved when you're doing the fitting. Yeah, it's nice that someone comes in the door and you're having, you know, work, but it's also how much time is it taking out of, from you, you know what I mean? So, and I have my prices all written out. I have a copy of them, you know, at my counter, and that's the prices that I go by. And I researched my prices for my area and everything like that. But when it comes to the recutting part, it cost me 45 minutes that I didn't get paid for. That's what I'm saying. And so um, I let it go this time because I'm just getting started and I should have said something in the beginning and I didn't. So I think you got my point. <laughs> so anyway, um, so yeah, so go ahead and see if you're able to, you know, do a jean hem. And you could just take in jean hems if you wanted to get started in doing a little bit of alterations and start earning some money. Um, I showed you how to do that a little bit here today. And now I'll just go to my iron and then I'll press this hem in and these will be good to go. So, um, so yeah, so it's pretty simple. It's just, it just takes a lot of practice. So if you have some extra material that you can practice on sewing a jean hem, sewing a rolled hem, um, you know, a half inch, cutting it one inch and then, you know, sewing it. Um, you can practice and practice makes perfect. And that's how you get better and better at your trade. So if any of you like my videos out there, go ahead and give me the thumbs up for this video today. I would really appreciate it. It would help with the algorithm of how YouTube works. I need to get my numbers up there because I would like to start monetizing this channel, start making money from my channel, especially more content that I put on here that I'm teaching and I'm showing you how to do things hands-on. I really want to get my numbers up there. So please, subscribe to this channel so I can do that and um, and I will you know then of course be putting more and more on so you will be helping me out I will be helping you out as time goes forward I'll be posting a lot more videos so thank you so much again Karen Eiten here and I look forward to your comments and any questions that you may have and I'll talk to you all in the next video when I make one of my different machines that I'm work that I have in my shop Okay, talk to you all soon. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.